And uh, welcome back to Celtic Ghost Watch, uh, live episode number three, I think it is, huh? It is. And tonight's yeah. topic is going to be all about uh, dreams. Oh, hold on, I can hear my mystic experiences. <laughs> Never just shame, blow that down. Hey, we won't get that now. Crusty voices. <laughs> anyway, so tonight's dreams, uh, yeah. So, um, again, it's myself, Ian. To my left is normally the guy behind the camera, Ryan. Yeah. And to my right then will be Dr. Martin Shrovey, our resident uh, psychologist and parapsychologist. So tonight, dreams, yeah. Um, I think there's a few things we talked yeah. about off camera we want to talk about. We did. Um, dreams. Dreams are very simply a message from yourself to yourself. Okay. Uh, we think the mind is made up of the conscious bit and the rest of the mind, 80% of it, is the unconscious. During the day, we've been processing what's happened. Everything we've ever experienced in a particular day, or indeed the rest of, up till now, is stored in there. The problem is, we remember consciously perhaps 2,000 bits of information, and we're probably dealing with several million bits a day. So when we dream, what we're effectively doing is processing the everyday stuff that we've gone through. A dream, if there's an, if there's an emotion that you're not handling particularly well, if there's a problem in your life you're not handling particularly well, if there's something you're really enjoying, it might influence your dreams. Okay. So look at the dream as a message to explore the inner self. And also look at it in terms of not a symbol, but a pun. It's there to remind you. Very, let me give you a very simple example. A friend of mine a few years ago was going to the Soviet Union and we, were, we, we drank a little bit too much that night and we made a joke about the KGB arresting him. <laughs> that night he dreamt about a bee in a cage. A KGB. Okay, I can yeah? see the... See the yeah. connection? Yeah. Now some people might work on that level. Um, some people might push images together. Everybody's dream symbolism is their own. So you can't go and get a book. Yeah and say, what does this mean? You have to say, what does this mean to so-and-so? And interpret it in that way. So, when you look at dreams, I say, what's going on? How does my mind work? What sort of symbols are there? Yeah? And that's how we can begin to tackle dreams. There's two sorts of dreams we have. There's what we call rapid eye movement dreams and non-rapid eye movement dreams. I'll give you a bit of the boring biology and anatomy of it, what happens is that when we sleep, we go through cycles of 90 minutes. For the first cycle, we move into REM sleep, okay. when the mind refreshes itself. When we move into the stages 2, 3 and 4, we are having non-REM sleep, which is when we think the brain and the body are pushing endorphins and neuropeptides to help the body recover. Yeah. REM dreams are dreams that help you deal with emotions. Non-REM are a little vaguer. Yeah? Okay. Uh, and not as vivid. Just carry on. I'm just going off camera. So, uh, let's think, for example, how we might use a REM dream and a non-REM dream. I'm sure all of you can remember um, what it's like when you look over and you see your pet with eyes moving rapidly, running, and you can see the, you can see the dog's legs twitch. Yeah. yeah. That dog is dreaming, effectively, in REM. Yeah? When the dog is deeply asleep, it's not moving. We're like that. Sometimes we wake up at, at the next stage of 90 minutes before we sink into it again. And as we go through the night and we get towards morning, the non-REM gets less and the REM increases. I'm sure you can all remember that sort of dream when you've been on holiday, you don't have to get up and you keep dozing off. And you dream upon dream upon dream. That's when you're nearing waking. So, always think of a dream in that way. In the West, when we think of dreams, some people say dreams are meaningless, they're no more than the garbage. You know? But if you treat your dreams as garbage, you're not going to get a lot out of them. So I throw them to one side in the morning, don't yeah. forget about yeah. them. You can do a lot about, if you respect your dreams, you know, you're going to find a lot of information about yourself. 
that you can either share with your significant other or you can think about during the day. <laughs> yeah. I am told that um, when John Prescott got into trouble for having an affair uh, with the lady concerned, uh, what, what, what actually made the lady's husband aware was she kept groaning and calling out John Prescott's name during the night. Now, um, a bit of a slip-up. A bit of a slip-up. <laughs> yeah. So be careful what you say in your sleep. Um, they're not necessarily dreams. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, we um, move on to our... Uh, next one, quite a one eight thing I was talking to you before. So, like, um, I've experienced myself is teeth. Yes. What are the dreams and teeth, then? Well... I'd have to first of all, um, if, we, if, 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 if you'd gone to see good old Dr. Freud in Vienna, okay. he would have thought you were suffering from castration anxiety, but I, I know you're not, so <laughs> I won't go down that line. But one of the main things about teeth usually is an anxiety about losing faith, face okay. in a public situation. Sometimes, I, I was working with somebody a few weeks ago who dreamt he'd gone to work stark naked. And he grabbed the nearest uh, cardboard box to uh, hide himself in. And the dream was so realistic that he actually thought he was at work. Uh, this guy was going through a particularly difficult time at work and having issues. So he felt literally naked at work, exposed, vulnerable. Okay, with it. Yeah. So always look. The most important thing is the feeling tone in a dream. Yeah. How does it make you feel? So that means you feel uncomfortable, yeah. comfortable, that thing, but first, yeah. Uh, yeah. If you jump out of a plane and you think it's wonderful, go with that flow. If you jump out and you're screaming your head off, it says something entirely different. Always relate the dream back to the person who's presenting you with the dream. Okay. Don't make interpretations that might be your view. I remember years ago, I had a very um, I was talking to a particular lady who was much enamoured uh, with uh, uh, John Major. She dreamt she was making love to John Major. Oh, I don't know if that's a uh, yes. happy dream and nightmare. Or... I, I don't know, it depends on the person's perspective. <laughs> but what I noticed, the irony was that years later, this was the same period where John Major was having the affair with Edwina Curry. So obviously John Major had an ability to touch people in many different ways. <laughs> but it depends on what John Major meant to you. Okay, fair enough. Um, what about then... Uh... And again, it's another thing we were talking about when we were off camera was uh, using dreams uh, creatively. Yeah. Um, one of the main reasons we're not creative is we let everyday life crush our creativity. Um, if we learn to use those dreams, we can develop our imagination, our ability to have insights and breakthroughs. Uh, there's some very interesting scientific work was discovered using dreams. Uh, there was, I can't remember who invented, who developed the structure of the, I think it was the benzene molecule. Okay. He fell asleep and he'd been working on this mathematical problem, how you got all the electrons and neutrons and protons to fit in with one another. He dreamt of two snakes encircling, biting each other's tails. Okay. And when he came to, he got the structure. Now, what's really interesting about that, that symbol of the snake is a very ancient, is a very, very ancient symbol of creativity. In ancient Greece, it was the symbol of the snake god in Greece, in Greek, in, uh, where Asclepius, where you would go and sleep in the temple to get insight. So there we had a rational scientist having a dream that helped him understand what was happening. Um, I can never remember who wrote the famous piece of work, The Devil's Sonata, but it was an 18th century composer who fell asleep and dreamt that the devil appeared and played on the fiddle. <laughs> when he woke up, he wrote it down. Okay. And that's the origin of The Devil's Sonata. Coleridge, the poet, <clears throat> after some sort of drug-induced binge, fell asleep and dreamt he heard a voice speaking a poem. In Xanadu did Kubla Khan a mighty pleasure dome decree where Alf the sacred river ran in caverns and measured us to bound down to the sun and the sea. And this dream went on and on and on. College woke up, wrote it down. But just as he was halfway through it, a debt collector called, so he was a bit distressed. And he never completed it. 
Um, the guy who invented the steam engine, or the idea for the steam engine, was it Stevenson? I think it was Stevenson. Yeah, was it James Watt? I, don't, I can never remember. Um, he was dreaming by the fire, and the kettle was boiling and pushing the lid up. Yeah, we've had a conversation about this. And he just couldn't be bothered to get up and deal with it. And then he suddenly had an idea. He's pushing that out. And that's where he got the idea. So our unconscious, our dream life, our creative life, if we respect it, can be really, really useful. That's right. So uh, if you do have any creative dreams... Uh, yeah, I mean, if there are anybody who wants to, you know, talk about a particular dream, please, you know, ask, ask, and, uh, ask away. Otherwise I can talk about dreams and I can talk about dreams in different cultures or whatever you like. Anything. Um, if you think about how we handle dreams, if you think about the ancient world, in the Bible, we have numerous examples of dreams being used in the Old Testament. We have Jacob's ladder, where Jacob wrestles with an angel. We have the dreams that Moses has yeah, when he's in okay. Egypt. Um, and people in those days saw dreams as, me as like messages from the other side. Um, the important thing to remember there is that Carl Jung, the great psychologist of the, uh, of the sort of the early part of the 19th century, 20th century, 20th century, believed that we all shared a thing called the collective unconscious, which is like a common layer of stored messages, stored symbols. And when we dream, we look at our own symbols there and we make interpretations from that. Okay. So it may be that, I'll give you an example, during the Third Reich, during Hitler's reign in Germany, mm. Hitler began to appear in more and more people's dreams. Okay. Yeah. That's because it was something that they were in. The only other recorded case of where we found that, where a person in politics has begun to appear in people's dreams, but during the 1980s, and apparently Maggie Thatcher used to appear in people's dreams quite regularly. Not as often as Hitler, but it was approaching it. Of course, I'm not making any political points out, of course. <laughs> More closer to the then. But the point could well be, couldn't it? <laughs> but the point is, um, the society we live in influences the basic layer of our dreams. Right, the so beliefs we have illustrate the levels, uh, the, 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 the nature of our dreams. What we're going through, so there's a society level, there's a personal level, and there's a level that is it from our unconscious. Okay. So we're dealing with three or four different, different strands. Different so different. every dream has to be looked at clearly, logically, logically imaginatively, using the person's way of looking at a dream. Okay. Yeah. Listing carefully. It's very helpful to write out your dreams and think about it. Yeah, do you? I'm going to ask a question. Do you do that? Yes, I do. Yeah? Or sometimes uh, I'll talk about my dreams in the morning. Because I've always talked about it. I've never actually yeah. sat down with pen and paper. It's a very good basis for a relationship to talk about your dreams in the morning. Yeah. Like, oh, I had a fantastic dream last night, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> yeah.